Thank you for coming back to us. So this is the second podcast in the BTEC Level 3 Sport Series. So in the last podcast, we had a look at the structure of the skeleton and tried to look at the difference between the axial and the appendicular skeleton. And then we described the location of the bones, trying to use the correct terminology so we can identify where things are in the body. So in this podcast, we are continuing to look at the skeleton and now we're looking at the types of bones. So there are five major types of bones in the body and what we've got to be able to do is try and match these terms with the correct bones. So we have flat bones, long bones, sesamoid bones, short bones and irregular bones. So let's have a look at trying to get some uh, examples of each of them. So if we take the humerus, so that big long um, bone that we have from pretty much the shoulder all the way down to where your elbow is. Okay, so that is a long bone. So the humerus is a type of long bone. Uh, we then have some flat bones and the example of a flat bone uh, is something like the sternum. So that big uh, breastplate that we have uh, in right in the middle of your chest. We then have these irregular shaped bones. Okay, so an example of an irregular shaped bone is something like the vertebrae. So if you have a look at them, they're a really sort of funky shape and they have a real specialized function. Uh, we then have a sesamoid bone. Okay, so an exa example of a sesamoid bone uh, is the patella and we'll look at why that is in a second. And then finally, we have some short bones. Now, short bones are a bit funny. They don't necessarily have to be really, really short. It's about the shape. And again, we'll continue to look at them in a second. So things like some of the bones around your wrist um, are what we would look at as being short bones. So what makes that type of bone the correct type? So let's start with long bones again. So long bones are found normally in the limbs. Uh, and the way to describe them is that they are longer than they are wide. So some examples of those are the femur, the ulna, and the phalanges. Short bones are small, light, and strong, and they are uh, as short as they are wide, so almost square. Um, you know, if we think about it that way, that they're sh as short as they are wide. So the examples here are the carpals, which are in the hand, and the tarsals, which are in the feet. If we now move on to looking at flat bones. So flat bones are thin and flat bones and they have a really big si uh, surface area. So they have a large surface area. So some of these examples are the scapula, the sternum and the cranium. Now most of the time a flat bone will protect a vital organ. So if we think about the cranium, which is gonna protect uh, our skull, uh, the sternum, which is protecting our heart and some of the lungs, and then the scapula, which, is, which protects the lungs from uh, any uh, blows that we might have from behind. So the fourth one is irregular shaped bones or an irregular type of bones. So these are complex and a bit unusual in their shape. So if you think about your spinal column, all the vertebrae that fit in between each other, they are termed as being irregular shaped. And then finally is that sesamoid bone. So this provides a small surface um, on a joint and the tendon then slides over that. So we find this in the patella, uh, which is the kneecap, as well as the metatarsals in the toes and the metacarpals in the hand. So we've got those five different bones and hopefully you now know a little bit more about how we characterize them. So if we now continue to look at the types of bones that we've got, so we've got our vertebrae column. So your spine is not just one bone. It is a series of vertebrae, um, some of them slightly different shape that make up your spinal column. So the vertebral column, as we call it. Now your vertebrae is broken up into some different uh, areas. So if we take the neck, which is what we call our cervical vertebrae. Okay, so the cervical vertebrae, in here we've got seven um, different vertebrae. We then move down to th the thoracic. So the thoracic takes us pretty much from uh, right about your shoulder blades all the way to just below your ribs. So, you know, pretty much the, the thorax if we were looking at it in insects, um, but for us it's our thoracic vertebrae. And in here, we've got 12 vertebrae. Uh, going further down into our lumbar region, so where you've got a bit of a dip in your back, so when you lie on the floor, you might see that you've got a curve there, and that is our lumbar vertebrae. And there's five lumbar vertebrae. Uh, going further down, okay, are our sacrum. Um, okay, so the area of the vertebrae column called the sacrum again. We've got five different vertebrae there, 
and then finally the coccyx which is a bit like your tailbone so we've got the cervical thoracic lumbar sacrum and coccyx so you need to try and find a way that you're going to be able to remember uh, the order um, so we might look at you know different mnemonics or different ways that you can try and try and remember them just try and find a way that works for you um, if it's personal to you then you're probably more likely to remember it so if we look at the vertebral column there are some slightly different um, postures that people might have um, or what we call postural deviations so a natural spine alignment uh, has this natural s shape uh, where when you view it from the side so if we look at um, the spine it should have three distinct curves in it okay now that's not always the case with anybody so the neutral spine angle is a good posture with those three natural curves but not everybody has that some people have slight deviations in their posture um, which mean that they're not in that neutral spine alignment so if we take the first one which is called kyphosis okay now kyphosis is a bit like a hunchback kind of appearance so it's an excessive outward curve around about a thoracic vertebrae um, and this gives a real hunchback appearance. So this is normally caused by poor posture or even a, a bit of a deformity in the vertebrae around that cervical area. Um, so if, if people have got a big sort of hump uh, appearance then we call that kyphosis. Uh, another type of abnormality or a postural uh, deviation is where people get a bit of an um, abnormal curving to either the left or the right. Uh, we don't really know why these happen though. And these um, postural deviations are what we call scoliosis. So some of you might have it, so you might know people that their normal spine would be straight up and down um, if we look at it from behind. But if we take someone who's got scoliosis, they're actually going to have a bit of a curve maybe towards the middle, um, but it's definitely not going to be straight. Okay, So those postural deviations that you need to know about uh, are kyphosis, where we've got a hunchback appearance, and scoliosis, where we've got um, a curvature either to the left or the right. So uh, continuing on with this theme then, looking at uh, the skeleton, the next thing you need to know is about how bones grow. Um, so remember that bones are living tissues and they're actually formed um, through a process called ossification. Okay, so uh, calcium and phosphate accumulate on the cartilage because um, bones actually start as a bit of a cartilage um, or cartilaginous type uh, material. Uh, and because the calcium and the phosphate starts to accumulate on this cartilage, uh, it actually causes it to die. And as the cartilage dies off, uh, tiny spaces that are left um, that blood vessels grow into and it's these blood vessels that are used to try and transport nutrients to the bone so that a term of ossification um, is a really key thing and you'll see it in some of the mark schemes um, so after that uh, each bone uh, starts to starts to form and it um, contains something called an uh, epiphyseal plate uh, which is actually the point where growing takes place from and when that bone is fully formed uh, that seals off and it's what we call an epiphyseal line uh, which is formed. So we've got some key terms there. So ossification, which is the process of how bones are formed. We've got an epiphyseal line, which is the line where the long bone is fully formed. Um, the point where a bone grows from is called the epiphyseal plate. Um, but we've also then got some uh, interesting cells that actually create or dissolve um, bone material okay so we've got osteoblasts and osteoblasts are the cells that actually start to create bone mineral whereas osteoclasts um, are the cells that dissolve that bone mineral so over a process um, we have um, certain material which is being removed and that is the osteoclast that is removing that whereas the osteoblasts are the things that are then recreating um, those bone cells or the cells that actually create the bone minerals so you, you might get a question uh, for four marks, for instance, looking at the process of bone growth. So we need to think about uh, mentioning things like ossification, about osteoplasts and osteoclasts, and also about the, the plate of point where uh, our bones grow from. So uh, just like we've looked at before, if we looked at some examination style questions. So the first one we are going to go for is, can you state the name of the cranium's bone type? Question two. Uh, a rugby player uh, fractures his skull in a scrum. Explain how the function of this bone will help the athlete. 
Third one is about our postural deviations. So can you describe the postural deviation of kyphosis? And number four, can you describe how bone cells maintain bone mass? So answers those questions. Uh, so the first thing, state the name of the cranium's bone type. Uh, well, that the cranium is a flat bone. Uh, rib player fractured the school drawn scrum. Um, explain how the function of this bone will help the athlete. Well, it provides protection uh, as it forms a hard shell around the brain and then absorbs the impact to protect the injury to the brain, uh, such as concussion or even brain damage. Question three uh, asked us to describe the postural deviation of kyphosis. So kyphosis is when the back is hunched uh, due to an abnormally large curve of the thoracic vertebrae. And number four, describe how bone cells maintain bone mass. Well, bone mass is maintained through the action of osteoblasts and osteoclasts. Osteoblasts are responsible for increasing the bone matrix after the osteoclasts have absorbed bone tissue during growth or repair. So again, a few little bits in there, and we've just added, hopefully, to the knowledge that we had uh, at the start. So in that podcast, we've looked at the types of bones, we've looked at the classifications, uh, some of the functions of those bones, postural deviations, and now we've just completed looking at the process of bone growth. So please like or subscribe the videos. Uh, please comment below uh, if there's anything that you think we need to be including in these podcasts to try and help you guys out to get the best grade possible in BTEC Level 3 Sport. Thanks again, and hopefully we will see you soon.